Hey guys, well it is a beautiful uh, April day here in South Georgia and uh, I've got some new help working on a camera and I wanted to do a bit of a, a test piece. We want to go through a whole little project just trying it out with uh, actually having somebody holding a camera instead of me trying to fight tripods. So we decided to cut the camera on and go with it. So what you're about to see is uh, just as is. We've like I said, I put on this nice shirt, but you don't want to see below the shirt because it's like I'm still on the Zoom meeting. I've got some crappy gym shorts on. So anyway, so we're going to do something kind of cool. Um, we uh, went to the scrapyard the other day and I got some plow disc and we're actually going to see if we cannot make a serviceable knife uh, out of a plow disc. Now here in South Georgia, of course, we have plow disc out the wazoo. Normally they tend to be uh, sometimes in the 1060 range. Uh, 60 points of carbon so you know it's probably not going to be like the super razor knife but I think we can harden it up and make something that's usable so um, now normally this would be where I'd actually cut and then you come back to a nice place well we're just running this damn camera so we need to go out to the truck and grab the piece out of the nasty back of the truck so let's go out to the truck All right, I got all kind of crap back here, so nobody judge me. Uh, we hit the scrap yard and actually found some hydraulic cylinders for our new hydraulic press. Uh, found a cool roll of little mini chain. Uh, gonna do some Damascus out of that. And uh, you know, I storehouse all my cool products in the back of the truck, so I don't have to be without them wherever I go. But this is actually what we are after. Um, this is a burnt up plow disc. They are normally about a quarter of an inch in the middle depending on the one, but you can see here on the edge it's like paper thin. So what we're going to end up doing is probably coming right in here and cutting our knife blank out of here. Now it's still going to have that dish to it, so we're going to have to heat it, drop it in the power hammer, and, uh, and get it all flattened up, but, uh, and then see if it can't be hardened properly. So. Uh, let's take this in there to the plasma, uh, clean it up, and draw us a knife and get to cutting. Now, plasma torches are awesome things, uh, but you can do a little bit of to help yourself. Now, you can cut this with the oxyacetylene, but at quarter inch, the, my plasma will do it. But one thing I am going to do is I'm going to clean the rust off here. Plasma works a lot better uh, with a cleaner material. So, I'm not going to use a stone. Uh, if I'm cleaning material up, what I like to use is an abrasive pad. Uh, we call them tiger pads from back in the day, but I think that was just a brand. But anyway, it's basically a bunch of pieces of sandpaper that are glued to a wheel. Just a little bit of clean on that end of it. It'll make everything go a lot easier. And for this knife, I'm gonna grab one of our blanks here. You know, we're just doing a knife for purposes, so uh, what I'm gonna do is drop that right there and just get kind of a general outline. Now, of course, because I'm using this big old thick soapstone, the knife's going to be a little bit bigger in shape and fashion, but that'll that'll work. That's not terrible bad. And uh, now I'll come back in with the plasma and go ahead and cut that out. All right, I think we've got everything that we need. I got myself some fancy new 
Shade 5 glasses, talk about all the ones were just about dead. So we got maximum juice. And here we go. Gotta get me some connection here. Still ain't got no good connection. There we go. Boy, it is really, this plasma is not strong for me. Well, uh, that kind of sucks high and tip. So for whatever reason, either it's the alloy in there or something, it is not liking the plasma. So we're going to go with our cutting torch. Now, the thing about the torch is it's fast, uh, but it really rags out, leaves a bunch of slag. So plasma is always preferable, but clearly plasma, they really didn't want anything to do with it. So um, I got a lot of space here. <laughs> so bump this out real quick. Well, I said I was. You can see right here where that plasma really didn't want to go through. So, Carl, I hope your ears are good. <laughs> there she goes. So really rough, I got a lot of slag on there, uh, but that's not going to be a problem. The reason I overcut it so much is so we can grind back down. Again, plasma does a much better job of this, but uh, yeah. So we're going to reheat this anyway, so I'm actually going to drop this in the water and cool it down. Now if this was a super high carbon steel, you know, you'd let this cool to room temperature, but with something this low we can get away with it and what I'll do now is actually come in with the grinder and start roughing all this stuff up and I want to get some clean lines and a clean profile in the knife
thing is hot. But you can see we've got everything cleaned up here. Um, all the slag has been removed uh, and we've got, you know, a clean profile. Uh, still got this bit of bow in it, this curvature, which we're going to take out. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to uh, pop this in the forge. Now you can do this by hand, um, but the really awesome thing you want to do is that's where the power hammer comes in because I can heat this joker up and because the, the dies of my power hammer are parallel, a couple of bumps and this thing is like perfectly flat and that's what we're going to do. So let me fire up the forge, throw this in there and um, flatten it and then we're going to need to anneal this because you know right now I don't have any uh, I don't have any holes in here for handle scales or uh, you know you know since we're you know since we're kind of doing this as a as a day build I think we may just end up uh, wrapping it with some crap uh, we're gonna do that we're gonna we're gonna wrap it with some crap we're not even going to worry about drilling it. We're, we're going to go this, go ahead and do this whole thing straight through. So let me fire up, pop this in there, and um, we're going to do some cool stuff with some brazen rod. Yeah. Okay. So I got a bunch of knives in there. They'll be fine. This is a scientific electrical delivery system. and a 100% OSHA approved firing mechanism. like still really hot and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in with some bronze brazing rod and we're just gonna do some cool crap with bronze brazing rod on here and the crazy thing is is that because the bronze brazing rod melts at a higher temperature than the hardening temperatures of this knife we can do whatever we want with the bronze and then actually come back and reharden the blade right through the bronze and it doesn't hurt anything this is like an old technique from the 1970s. Uh, Cooper, who was a very famous knife maker, used this on his guards. And uh, Virgil England, I believe, used something similar to this. So I'm, uh, I've am i been interested to tinker with it. And so let's just, let's just dab some bronze on there and do something cool. So... I think what I'm going to try to do first... Guys, again, I have no idea if this is actually going to work or not. And I'm probably going to need a different torch in.
draw. I was thinking about trying to do some fluffs and some other stuff, but I think we're just going to go raw. So I got a bronze brazier rod, and what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to uh, stick it somewhere in there and allow me to actually wrap the bronze around the knife, which I probably have to turn it out uh, on this side to do uh, actually. Be a little bit better. So let's see what I can do here. This thing's already kind of hot. Give me the juice. I may end up having to go back with the cutting torch here to get enough heat, but no. Decency looks terrible. Join. 
got it. A little bit of flux. Now, I'm going to tell you, I feel like there's not a lot of chance of me doing this the right way. This will be our last one right here. And I'm going to see if I can't pull it down, melt it. And I am going to try to take a little bit of flux. Which this should be a paste. Instead, it is chunky chunks. A little flux on there. And I'm going to try to use it just like that. So, now, I don't want to leave it looking like that. I mean, this thing's going to be rough to start with. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this out. Put this whole thing uh, in the forge bring it up to heat and I'm going to do a little bit of hammer texture on it just to kind of make it less suck looking. <laughs> now you always have to be very careful uh, when you're working with the bronze because it goes from dark to red to puddle. So you always have to be very, very careful. I'm actually going to come in and we're just going to actually solder those pieces up, maybe add some different lines. Again, this is just artwork, so who gives a crap if it turns out crappy? So let's go back over here. And I'm actually going to grab some powder flux, some actual borax, if I can find. Uh, the infamous toolbox of borax. And I'm 
I'm basically just going to come in and those bad wells, I'm just going to put like a little solid bead. I don't want you guys to ever think I know what I'm doing. So we'll cook that in. not locked down this is like really terrible technique feel like I should be asking forgiveness so we'll do one right there I'll do one up front just for aesthetics This one double sucks over here. here and actually lock this piece in. I say so. see we've just kind of put some crap on here so I'm gonna cool this all the way down now and uh, and then we're gonna do a little bit of grinding and then we'll harden and temper and uh, yeah yeah let's but you know but first we're gonna do a hero shot with the camera <laughs> whoa, whoa. Because I know this stuff is relatively low carbon is the only reason I get away with this crap. Uh, you add some higher end stuff, uh, you know, like 1095 or something like that, you would be in a lot of trouble. It shattered in a heartbeat, but this stuff's a little bit more resilient. Now what's cool about this stuff is this stuff polishes up like you wouldn't believe. So just a lot of fun crap you can do with this. So for here, we're going to come in. I'm going to take that 36 grit and we're going to rough in a uh, we're going to rough in a couple of bevels there. And again, since this is just a play piece, I'm not paying a tremendous amount of attention to detail or fit and finish. This is just cool stuff. So let me grab some earmuffs and we're going to go to the big grinder.
one thing I've noticed about uh, these particular steels is they are actually very soft. They grind very quickly compared to some of the other knife steels. So I know this is on the low end of the carbon. I'm, I'm positive I'm going to have to water quench this. And, uh, you know, again, this being a mystery steel, I'm essentially uh, using the swag method, the scientific wild ass guess. So I'm pretty sure if I bring this up to non-magnetic and drop it in water, it's not going to crack. In fact, I think I'm going to have to do that to actually get it anywhere close to what hardness it needs to be. Uh, I'm going to do this in the furnace. Uh, you know, this is not digital control oven, anything like that. So that's kind of where we're at. So I'm going to try to roll this piece around, set it there on the edge, let it soak a little bit. Because the forge is hot enough to actually melt the bronze. I mean, this is running about 2200 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe 23 in the middle. But you want, don't want to get it that high. So we're going to go with that right there, and we're going to go. And is she going to break? I hear no tinkage. no tinkage. The deadly tinks, if you don't know what the deadly tinks are, uh, when you have a knife that you're hardening, uh, if it gets hard too quick and it breaks, it's not like a snap. It's a tink. And you've got a giant crack for your knife. So let me grab my file. And let's see. It is just wanting to bite right there. So this is probably in the Oh no, it's refusing it. So this is probably in the 58, 59 Rockwell area, which is not terrible on that end of it. So we're kind of, yeah, that's not terrible. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to clean this up. And uh, I wasn't expecting it to do right on the first time. So uh, let me let me clean this up and we'll put an edge on it and we'll see if it'll slice paper. Yeah, let's do that. Let's be cool dudes. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the handle first. This is a 400 grit wheel. Uh, that's kind of uh, extra shiny. Let's throw a 120 grit belt on there and let's start the sharpening process. So at the end of the day, junkyard steels rarely are a great knife because you never know what they're made out of. You don't know what the proper heat treatment is and you know even if you dropped it in the straight water uh, if it's going to harden up so this is passable I can still get somebody in the neck with it
go over here to the 220. Now once again, I want to stress that you guys are seeing a whole lot of what not to do. So for one, that was 120. That bad boy should have been super slow. But we're getting it done today. Now, if you ever get into sharpening, you know that you can actually tell a lot about the steel and its characteristics by the wire edge that comes up. And this wire edge is very wide, very soft, so again, this is not going to be a great blade. But it will be a cool blade. So now let's do a little button. actually shaving here. How about that? Let's, uh, let's walk right out here and let's grab a piece of paper. Now this is a super thick blade. This is quarter inch. Uh, you know, it ain't, it ain't, uh, it ain't no joke. It ain't no joke. So, uh, you know, so the moral of the story is, is that for as much as people obsess over steels, and there are proper ways to heat treat these things, um, you know, sometimes you can get lucky and find decent steels. It's still soft. It, it, amazingly, it doesn't seem to be very abrasion resistant. Uh, but, you know, it's a pretty cool thingamajigger bob. And, uh, Okay, let's go over to the table. Let's uh, put it next to the let's put it next to the plow disc and uh, see where it started. And uh, yeah. So here's our here's our plow disc, and uh, you know here's our here's our finished knife. Not pretty, but I guarantee you can stab somebody in the neck with it. So, folks, uh, again, thank you guys for watching the videos. I know it's been a while, and uh, we're getting back to the groove of things. We've got cameraman Carl now on duty, and uh, so nice to be able to walk around and work without having to screw with cameras. So, we're going to give it a run. So, guys, thank you all so very much. Y'all be good, and I'll see you next time.